more bizarre lighting here, more bad sound, and yet it is still I, Martin Zunder, at the Revelation series, and we are officially beginning chapter 15 today. Yes, chapter 15. I'm very happy about that because, as you know, I struggled through chapter 14, and from what I'm seeing so far, chapter 15 is no picnic. I'm a little, oh, there goes my computer's all over. I'm probably at an angle because it's perched on my suitcase right now. And the suitcase I brought on Spirit Airlines, and I can't make it stay still because I am flying by the seat of my pants here. And I tried to improve the sound by buying a Radio Shack uh, fancy clip-on microphone for $29.95. It doesn't work with my computer, of course. Uh, this is uh, Satan withstanding. Satan, that is, the adversary, the one who doesn't want any true words about God to go forth. But And I got frustrated, and I thought, you know what? I'll just make this show tomorrow. No, no, I make it today. I do make do with what I have. I'm uh, have, I want to get closer to my microphone. See, I, I can do this, and we can become very intimate. We can become very intimate in a short amount of time here. I want to get my computer closer to me. Didn't know how to do that. I tried my suitcase. It's actually perched on the wheels, which probably isn't the best thing, but so it is. Now I'm going to read chapter 15. No matter what, I have to talk to you. That's it. Chapter 15, verse 1. Are we not moving along? Oh, yeah. Here we go. And I perceived another sign in heaven. Uh, why not another sign? Because um, there are signs throughout here. Revelation itself isn't a sign, but Revelation contains signs. We discussed that a long time ago. Great and marvelous. To John's sight, this was great and marvelous. Seven messengers having the last seven calamities. My God, how many times... Have we been through the last seven calamities? It seems to me uh, that we have been through the last seven calamities. But no, we've been through a lot of calamities here together through the unveiling of Jesus Christ. But these are the last seven. And these are the worst naturally, naturally. It's going to be very bad. See, I can come close to you now and talk to you with my Logitech microphone. Not the ideal, but we're doing what we can here. And I perceived... Oh, wait a minute. Oh, listen to this. Seven messengers having the last seven calamities, seeing that in them, that is, these messengers and their calamities, God's fury is consummated. Great word, consummated. It's finished, but it's a $10 word. It's really elegant, consummated. And I perceived, as it were, a glassy sea mixed with fire. Again, the contrast. Uh, this well, John saw this. He saw a glassy sea. He saw a sea that looked like it was ice, but it was glassy, you know, it was mixed with fire. Once again, we have a God who knows what he's doing. This, these bowls were predicted in the Song of Moses. I'm going to read you excerpts from the Song of Moses. He predicted that, that calamities would come on Israel to, to bring them into the kingdom. It would be a good thing, not a bad thing for them. Well, it would be bad in the short term, but good in the long term, just like what he does with us. And those who come off conquerors from the wild beast and from its image and from the image of its name standing on the glassy sea. I'm impressed by this because everyone who has come out of the conflagration, who have conquered the wild beast, not signed up for the wild beast, these were seen by John to be standing on the glassy sea. Instantly, I think of Peter walking on water. To me, that was a fantastic miracle. I've often thought in my mind what that looked like and what it felt like to Peter to be walking on the sea. Uh, it had to have been weird. And it was weird, but he sustained himself by looking at Jesus Christ. As soon as he took his eyes off uh, his Savior, his Master, and began to consider the waves, then he was sunk. He was done for Jesus saved him, otherwise he would have drowned. The seas were tempestuous that day, my friends. The seas were angry. But this is a glassy sea. And it is almost as if those standing on them are standing on them dry shot. So this is not like Peter, where you still have this, this tumult. Now, Jesus Christ is closer than ever to inaugurating the kingdom. And so there is a picture of steadfastness, of a sure message that is on the horizon for Israel. Now, uh, if they're standing on a glassy sea mixed with fire, I'd like to compare that to what we have. 
we have more than a glassy sea. This speaks of firmament, and yet something that should be waving and tumultuous, but it's not. That's weird. That's weird. We have a, a glassy sea, and yet uh, fire. Uh, and they're having the lyres of the Lord. We'll talk about that. Those crazy stringed instruments again that Israelites are so excited about, but of which I could not care much. However, it's in here, so I'm going to apply it. Um, and God's working on me right now on this. Now, but listen to this. We have promises in the book of Romans that I've been discussing in the Romans series. And yet we are still in the midst of a wicked eon. Follow my analogy here. Peter walking on the Sea of Galilee in a storm, in the middle of a wicked eon, in the middle of the evil that was about to take his master and put him on a cross, and yet he's walking on top of it. He's sure. He's yes, more or less confident as long as he's looking at Jesus Christ. But as soon as he takes his eyes off him and considers the waves, then he's sunk. But these conquerors, they are so sure of their reward that they are standing, as seen by John, on a glassy sea. So it's like uh, the trouble and the tumult is just right down there, uh, but you're firm and you can walk. So we are firm right now. We can walk even though we're surrounded by evil. Never mind it. They come off as conquerors. Jesus Christ has conquered for us. We don't have to conquer. Uh, to Whoever overcomes will eat from the tree of life, not our message. We're not overcomers. We have overcome by Christ. Christ overcame for us. We were crucified with Christ. 2,000 years ago, that was our conquering. That is our glassy sea. That's where we walk in the midst of an evil eon. You got that. Having the liars of the Lord God. And again, singing. What do I think of? Applying it to our evangel. I think of Paul and Silas in the prison in Philippi singing hymns to the Lord. Because again, they were on a glassy sea. They had just been beaten with rods by rude people, rude city officials in Philippi. And they were put in the lower jail, and their feet were in stocks, and their beaten backs were against hard rock. And there, after a while, doesn't happen right away. Uh, they have to get their senses back. They start singing praises. An earthquake comes. Jailer's impressed. He ends up hearing the message because they're on a glassy sea, man. We are on a glassy sea. You know what? I like this. I really do. I'm glad we're starting chapter 15, and I'm glad for this glassy sea and I'm glad for the standing too I'm glad for the standing because I can take that literally as they're standing or I can take it figuratively speaking of our standing before Christ you see that application there where else are you going to get this honestly so this helps me I'm not just saying that it really does if this can be a good thing for these Israelites how good is it for us who have so many more blessings and such a closer relationship with Christ than even Israel? Having liars of the Lord God. And they are singing the song of Moses, the slave of God. That's just perfect because Moses was their progenitor. If Abraham had a song, they'd be singing that. But they sing the song of Moses, the slave of God. And the song of the Lambkin sang, and this is their song at that time. We're going to go into the song of Moses, as I promised, but this is the song, and I'm in the unveiling. I remind you, chapter 15, there goes my computer again, sliding down the wheels of my little luggage, my little Spirit Airlines luggage bag. We're in chapter 15, and I'm beginning now verse 3. Here's the song that they sing. Great and marvelous are thy acts, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are thy ways, king of the eons. Not very snappy. It doesn't rhyme. It doesn't even come close to rhyming, but let's continue. Who ne'er may fear thee, Lord, and glorify thy name. I hate the King James language. Hate it. For thou only art benign, for all thy nations will arrive. That was kind of good. I like that line. I have to admit. Let me read it again. For thou only art benign, for all the nations will arrive, and worship before thee, for thy just awards were made manifest. I, I, I think something's lost in the translation here. All right, 
let's do this without the King James language. Let me uh, translate this on the fly as normal people talk. Great and marvelous are your acts, Lord God Almighty. I get it. Just and true are your ways. This reads much better this way. King of the eons. I get that. You know what eons are. They're long period of time. He's the king of long periods of time. Of the five long periods of time in which we find ourselves with Israel. We're on the same planet as these people right now. And God is going to finish with them. And he's uh, going to finish with them after he finishes with us. Who never may fear thee, Lord, and glory... Oh, sorry, I used the King James. Who never may fear you, Lord, and glorify your name? Who never may fear you? That's a bad sentence. In other words, who doesn't fear you? Uh, who, I guess, yeah. Who will never fear you? There is no one who will never fear you. This is fear in the sense of awe and majesty. There is no one who will never not fear you. Of God for eternity for the eons anyway because God is going to eventually reveal himself to all people he's not doing that now still don't like that line at all and glorify your name his name will be glorified you know what we're the only ones now on the planet glorifying his name have you thought of this I'm putting this away because I feel good about what I'm about to say glorify your name how many times do you hear that we glorify your name O Lord let me ask you this question do Christians glorify his name and quick answer no uh, are the Jews, Israel, now glorifying his name? Quick answer, no. They don't even believe that Jesus Christ is the Messiah. Are people who don't know God, who peop are people of the nations in the darkest of Africa, who have never heard of the Gospel of Paul, are they glorifying his name? No? Okay, let's check these people off. Christians, no. The Jews, no. Uh, the Aborigine, no. Uh, tribal people in the darkest jungles of or plains or savannas of Africa who have never heard his name no do you know who that leaves us do you know how many uh, do you know how many members of the body of Christ are on this planet let me take a guess I'm just putting this out there for you you've heard me say it before if there are 5,000 I would be shocked shocked but I'm giving you a crazy number I want to say 5,000 and of these 5,000 how many talk about God how many glorify his name I'm talking about the message of the salvation of all. And I'm talking about grace. I'm not talking about churches who claim to teach grace, but who are hypocrites and don't mean it. I'm talking about um, glorifying God as he is, as he reveals himself, as plain as he has ever revealed himself. He does that to us through the Apostle Paul. So we are the only ones on the planet right now glorifying God the world again no Israel no Christians no the nations most of them for whom this evangel was sent they don't hear it that's why I'm putting this stuff on YouTube and I'm putting this stuff in my newsletter and I'm putting it on the internet and it's free did you notice that it's all free this shows free my newsletter is free which reminds me reminds me of I need help to get this show out to get this work uh, out to in greater avenues once in a while when I do a really great show which you know I do hit a jackpot once in a while we throw a little extra money at it and, um, and we put it on some search engines uh, or we put it a uh, bigger profile on what do you call that thing that I never go to Facebook and um, so this stuff, like I say, we, 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 we do this once in a while. Why? To glorify God's name. Because there are so few people doing it. And in fact, I'm one of two people, as far as I know, I'm sorry if I slight anyone, I'm one of two people on the planet Earth doing this full time. So, um, help me if you can. If you can, go to my website. This show exists and only keeps going because of your help, because of your generosity. I don't force anyone. Of course, I don't beg for money, do I? I'm not begging for money now. I'm just saying that uh, you can help me now. This is a great time because once the snatching away happens, you've lost all opportunity to participate in this great work. I'm participating in it. I can't tell you how much money I have lost in the last 23 years because I quit the post office. I used to add it up. You know, the first year I lost 10000 by that 20, 30, 40. I mean, I, this has cost me lo lots of money.
So if you can help me, go to my website, martinzetter.com. There's a little tab on the upper left. It's red, donate to the ministry, I think it says. And this is a ministry. Though I hate that word in a way because it's so Christian-y. Uh, don't consider this a ministry. Consider it work. Maybe it does say work. I think I had Kelly change it because I saw the word ministry there. And I just, ugh, ugh. Um, it's a work. We're laborers. We're just working. It's not neat. It's not... Uh, clean it's not organized it is in a way it's grassroots it's from the heart not from coercion it's not from a tithe it's not from a law it's from a joyful heart and if you have a joyful heart and you want to help me then there's many ways to contribute to this work monthly contribution automatic you can do it and forget about it i appreciate it believe me a woman sent me a check the other day for five dollars you know what i did i swear to you i kissed it i took that check i i kissed it do not think I despise the widow's might. I don't. I, I love it. I appreciate every dollar I get. Uh, and so, um, again, it, it goes uh, for the work and toward my sustenance. I need food <laughs> and clothing and shelter. So thank you for everything you've done for me. I will continue to produce this show no matter what I have to do, even if it means putting my uh, computer on top luggage wheels in the most awkward manner possible. I'll do it. I will. I promise.